Thank you for joining us today. We're here in support of a National Women's History Museum. Today, in the Women's Issues Committee, we heard the City Council Resolution 354 to build a National Women's History Museum on the National Mall. I'm uh, proud to be here with so many luminaries of the women's movement. Congresswoman Carol Maloney, Chair of the Women's Issues Committee, Lori Cumbo, former Congresswoman, Controller, and District Attorney, Elizabeth Holtzman, and uh, we hope to be joined later by the Executive Director of the National Organization for Women in New York City, Sonia Osario. Congresswoman Maloney has passed uh, this legislation with bipartisan support, H.R. 863 in the House of Representatives, with 383 in favor and 33 against, to build a commission to establish a National Women's History Museum. It's a companion bill in the Senate. It's now being blocked, not completely surprising, by two male Republican senators, Mike Lee of Utah and Tom Coburn of Oklahoma. Now here in New York City, we're doing things a little bit differently. We're organizers. So I will be calling on, along with Chair Cumbo, my colleagues and the fellow city councils in Oklahoma and Utah and Salt Lake City and Oklahoma City, and we will be asking them to ask their U.S. Senators to do what's right for women in their states as well. As the Daily News editorial today pointed out, these senators should have to explain why women's history is less important than the history of textiles, the Postal Service, and spies. <laughs> New York City is ready to add the voice of our nation's most populous city to this fight. I'm envisioning a place where a young woman in New York City can go to be inspired by the accomplishments of incredible women throughout American history. These young women of New York City will be the next generation of women leaders, CEOs, American presidents, and I want to see them, I want them to see what's possible. There's a 501c3 organization ready to go that has already been fundraising for this museum. We've, we are ready to go. We just need these two senators to end the delays and finally move us forward. From Nellie Bly to Eleanor Roosevelt to New York City has produced countless remarkable women, far too many to count, that must be highlighted in our nation's capital. I'd now like to introduce the congresswoman who made all of this possible, who has been tireless and passionate in her advocacy and a widely recognized leader on women's rights movement, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Ben. Really, really, Laurie Cumbo should be speaking next. No, you go but ahead. I have to go to Washington and leave here and get, get on a plane uh, to get there to vote tonight. But I really want to thank uh, Ben Kalos for authoring this resolution and Councilwoman Laurie Cumbo for chairing it and having the hearing and moving it forward. Of course, Liz Holtzman, who is uh, a great leader uh, for women and so many causes for our great city and country. Sandra Osario from New York Now, who has been a great leader on this also. And of course, our speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, for, for moving this bill forward. I understand there will be a vote this Wednesday, and hopefully it will pass. Uh, it passed the, the House of Representatives with strong bipartisan overwhelming support. HRD 863 had 383 for, only 33 against, and everyone in the entire Senate is for it, save two senators who have put a quote hold on it, one from Oklahoma, one from, from Utah, and we are appealing to them to remove their hold. They keep saying it costs money, but it doesn't. It's written in three different ways by Marsha Blackburn, and it will not take one dime of federal money. And if they would please explain to the press why they're opposed to setting up a commission that would look at the idea mm -hmm. of creating a women's museum. Um, as the Daily News said today, you've got museums for textiles, spies, uh, every other uh, group in America, but not half the population. Uh, so this is important and it's something that should, should happen. I see that one of our great leaders who should be in the bill is here, Sybil Shanewall. And uh, she's been a great uh, leader in, in, in uh, women's health, has led many of the lawsuits that protected women in the future. Um, I, I just want to say that, uh, that, that this is a very, very important uh, resolution the City Council is passing, and the idea that they are going to take this to Utah and Oklahoma and ask those council members to stand up and pass this resolution. Uh, but women's history is largely missing. Right now, uh, fewer than 5% of the 2,400 national monuments are, are of women. If you tour the Capitol, there are well over 200 
of statues, but only 14 are of women. In a review of textbooks, only 10% of it mentioned uh, the contributions of women. And as we in the country are encouraging young girls to go into STEM research, what better way to inspire them to go into a science, mathematics, uh, economics uh, field than to show them the, the people that have want, gone and achieved great things in these fields prior to this. Uh, uh, the woman who just won uh, a very big science prize said she liked to solve puzzles. Well, I would like to solve the puzzle on why these two senators are opposed to this bill. I, 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 they say there's not a war against women, but why can you have a museum on everything in the world except for women? I mean, what is that? I would like them to explain exactly why they're opposed to a bill, and it's got to be more than saying that it costs money uh, when it doesn't. Uh, New York has been a great uh, city for um, civil rights movements. Uh, the, the, the whole movement for the women's movement began here in New York State, in Seneca Falls. We've had many outstanding leaders, including uh, Elizabeth Holston. She has so many titles, I'm not going to list them. She's done everything. Uh, but also Geraldine Ferraro, uh, the first woman to be considered seriously on a major party. And Sybil Shanwell with all of her wonderful suits to help women's home. Um, they're great scientists, the Nobel Prize winners, great trailblazers like Liz Holtzman and others. And, and we need their stories need to be told. Um, and, and that's what we're trying to do. When I started working on this, I was thinking about putting a museum on the mall. But in my studies, I can't find a museum anywhere. I find it astonishing. Mm -hmm. Dedicated That's to right. the contributions of women. Nowhere in the United States, I can't find one anywhere in the world. And it's uh, a very, very startling. And we hope to change that. And um, uh, they say women hold up half the sky. Well, if they're holding up half the sky, there's got to be a lot to talk about in this museum. So we're, we're hoping to pass this in this Congress. And uh, in a do-nothing do Congress, I say this is a new love. It's a bill that doesn't cost any money. It has massive bi bipartisan support and uh, would just uh, address something that has been ignored, the contributions of women in our history books and our statues and in our national monuments. So I think it's very important for our young boys and girls to, to, to hear this history. So I want to thank you. I want to congratulate you on your hard work. Thank on you. the passage. Thank on you. On the passage. Thanks so much. And I'm going to go catch a phone. <laughs> Thank you. Our next speaker, I'd like to introduce the chair of the Women's Issues Committee, uh, herself, the founder of the Museum of Contemporary African Diasporan Arts. She's been a pleasure to work for and a great leader, whether on prison reforms issue or sexual health. Uh, Councilmember Lori Cumbro, who has particular expertise on both issues, whether it's women's issues or museums. This uh, resolution, which she is co-prime sponsor of, is uh, right up her alley, and without further ado. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Ben Kalos. This is really a topic that's very dear to my heart. Uh, as a founder of a museum, as well as having worked at the Metropolitan Museum, the Brooklyn Museum, as well as the Brooklyn Children's Museum, I understand how museums have an opportunity to shape the way we see ourselves and also the way we shape and see one another. And this institution is certainly an idea whose time has finally come. It's actually very long overdue. And it's so important when we look at our textbooks, with only 10% of the images in textbooks and subject matter feature being that of women, we certainly recognize why the challenges and the gaps exist with women assuming so many positions of leadership. Young women must know their history so that they can blaze the future to see firsthand the challenges and triumphs that so many women before them have blazed. I also know that historical documents, photographs, memorabilia, exhibitions, public programs can inspire people across all racial, social, economic, and political boundaries. Imagine young men visiting this museum. This would be an opportunity to inspire them as well, and most importantly, for them to see women as equal counterparts in the shaping and the building and the development of our country, as well as the world. So much potential is necessary to balance the further development of the world, and this must begin with this museum. I look forward to working with my colleagues in government on the federal, state, and city level 
to make sure that this museum becomes a reality. This is something that we can all participate in terms of shaping the building and creation of a museum in our lifetime. This is going to be historical and I look forward to working with all of my colleagues. I am very disappointed that on the Senate level, this is being held up in this way. This really shows the traumatic dynamic that's happening in our levels of Congress that are holding up so many issues that we want to push forward. So I look forward to working with my colleagues all across the nation to make sure and to urge that our Senate counterparts push this piece of uh, legislation through. So thank you very much, and I'm going to turn it back over to our leader, Ben Kalos. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Next up, and uh, she's been the subject of everybody's talking points, uh, our speaker, Elizabeth Holtzman, uh, is the only woman ever elected to the Comptroller's Office, the only woman ever elected as District Attorney in Kings County, and the youngest woman ever elected to the United States Congress. These bears she has broken down for the next generation of women are unbelievable, and I'm so proud she's with us today. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Ben, for your kind words. And first, uh, congratulations to Ben Kalos for introducing this legislation and to Lori Cumbo for their tremendous leadership on this subject. And of course, to my good friend and colleague, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, who has steadfastly fought for women's equality throughout her career in public service. She's been an outstanding representative for New York City. Um, I just want to add a few words. I remember when the Holocaust Museum was, was the legislation was introduced into the United States House of Representatives. And there was no objection. And the museum was ultimately built. And look what it has done to transform the whole issue of genocide in this country and around the world. People have a much deeper understanding of the horrors and how many school children have gone through and how many tourists have gone through and how many visitors from every corner of the globe have benefited from that museum. What are these two senators ashamed of? What are they afraid of? Think about the women in this country who would make anybody proud they're from the West. Women helped to settle the West. Women, and actually women's rights were advanced first in the West because women said, listen, we came out here, we settled this land, and you're not gonna ignore us. So how can they ignore the, the history of the settlement of the West? How can they ignore the great accomplishments of women in the United States from Sojourner Truth to Susan B. Anthony to Congresswomen and senators and governors and others. What are they ashamed of? They're ashamed of their mothers. They're ashamed of their sisters. They're ashamed of their nieces, of their daughters. This is an outrage. A women's museum, as was pointed out, will help educate boys as well as girls, men as well as women. The Holocaust Museum is not just for Jews. The Holocaust Museum is for everybody to make sure never, this never happens again. A women's museum is a way of showing that every person on this globe has a potential, whether they're a woman or whether they're a man. We've ignored the potential of women and the contributions of women. This is something to inspire everyone. And so I really hope that with these wonderful, uh, energetic leaders, Lori and Ben and Congresswoman Maloney, that we will get this legislation passed. This is only a very first step. It's only a commission. It's not even going to be funded by Congress. The House of Representatives, which is extremely partisan, passed this legislation. It is bipartisan. It is, doesn't favor Republicans. It doesn't favor Democrats. Mm -hmm. It favors the idea of the dignity and contributions of women. Let's get to it. That's Thank right. You. Thank you. I'd like to welcome a, another guest, um, Sybil, uh, who the congressman referred to for her uh, history of litigation. And if you don't mind making a couple of remarks. 
it's not only litigation, it was litigation for women against corporate America, but also I consider myself a very active women's health, women's advocate in all areas. Women do 90% of the world's work. They get 10% of the world's wages. Uh, and of course women are, uh, if you look at the statistics, I think it was in last Sunday's time, women still get less than men in the United States, in spite of the Red Better Bill and everything else, than men do. Uh, this bill, what, what the Congresswoman wants to pass is, is so uh, unthinkable that there's a, even a debate about it. It, it. Time has come, and it's time for women to take their rightful place in history. A young woman approached me recently. She is the head of an organization called Consoy. Her name is Julie Silverberg. And what Consoy looks at is what I looked at as an American history major, the role of women in this country, in the whole country. What did they do during the revolution? What did they do during the Civil War? What did they do during periods of conflict? What did they do during periods of prosperity? Uh, they haven't been given their rightful place in history, and this is a great start. Thank you.